I'm guessing you're here because you're going to be photographing an event and sharing those photos with us to use in our digital and print campaigns. And that's great. So first of all, thank you so much for taking your time not only to watch this video, but particularly to go to that event, take those photos, and share them with us. I'm also assuming that maybe this is your first time or you've only done it a few times, so you're looking for some basic tips on how to try to get the best photos that you can in the constantly moving and changing environment of an event. On that always moving and changing environment note, the first thing to know is that every photo is a learning experience and you will miss shots. Don't worry if a particular shot is blurry or dark or someone walked in front of you or you just completely missed a shot because you didn't think to get over to that corner of the room at that time. Don't make yourself crazy trying to get the perfect shot. Remember that the primary goal for the event is for the event to go well. You kind of need to be the photo ninja. Wear dark clothing. Stay off to the sides. Avoid sudden movements of running across a room. And be extra careful not to get between the attendees and the action of the event, particularly during key moments. Also, be careful not to get in the way of the active participants who are moving around the room trying to get from an altar to a chair to completely out of the room to back into the room and moving candles and incense and flowers and books and all the things going on. Again, it's important that those things happen the way that they're supposed to happen. Now to the photos. Camera. It doesn't really matter what you have, a DSLR, a point and shoot, a cell phone, whatever you have will work fine. Big thing, turn off the flash during the event. Maybe you'll use it afterwards for the stage shots. Maybe you'll use it a little bit before for some candid shots. My recommendation, candid, turn it off if you can. Event, absolutely turn it off. And if you can avoid it for the posed, do so. As far as shooting arrangement, horizontal, whenever possible. There'll be a couple shots that might look better vertical, but in general, horizontal is your best option. With video, it's always your best option. Always shoot video horizontally. Next thing, don't sweat the settings. If you're shooting an SLR, shoot in auto or green, most of them will call it. It'll be fine. Camera's smart enough to figure most things out. And we'll give you some tips on how to accommodate things that the camera gets a little confused on. A big thing to remember as far as composition, don't waste space. Heads, don't put the nose in the middle of the shot vertically. Put it towards the top. Leave a little bit of room, just enough that you've got a little bit of space. Left and right, it's good to leave some room because we're probably going to need to crop things periodically and fit them whatever we're doing. Um, but the head, we want as close to the top as we can get with just enough room that if we need to straighten or crop the photo, we can do it. So just a little bit. Anything above the person's head, ultimately, we're probably going to get rid of. So it's just wasted megapixels. Make sure that we can identify faces. That's a big deal. Make sure that the faces are big enough that we can see them is really what we're talking about. There are three opportunities to shoot. We've touched on this a little bit. There's before the event, during the event, and after the event. Before the event is a great time to get candid shots of the excitement and the energy of the moment. Again, flash would kind of distract from that because people would notice that you were there. You wouldn't be being the photo ninja. During the event, definitely no flash, as we said. Post-event, you're probably going to be getting group shots. That's really what everybody wants after an event. We'll walk through some tips for those. Uh, let's go ahead and start with groups. Two, three, four people. You can still frame them in pretty well. Get their faces so we can see who they are. It's not too crowded. You start getting over the number of four and five. Now you're just getting into a lot of heads. The faces are getting smaller. They're harder to identify. You're trying to cram everybody in. The general rule is stick around for three to five people at the most or go big, 10 to 50 people. You shoot a photo of 50 people, everybody goes, oh, that's a group. They sit and they figure out, oh, this is all family members. Oh, these are all Carmelites who attended. And then they go get their magnifying glass. <laughs> so just be careful of the more than five, less than 10. Another consideration with big groups is lighting. Um, if you're going to shoot a big group, try and spin the group around so that any large light source, be it a window or a large light, is shining in their face and at the back of your head. It's kind of the only way to light a group well, uh, unless you brought additional lighting. 
Another thing with your small groups, particularly two, three, four, five people, keep their heads and faces in the same plane. Think about this. This is my hand and my head. This is also my hand and my head. Notice how much larger my hand looks just because it's a little bit in front of my face. Tell people to bring their faces in about the same plane so that one person doesn't look like the Jolly Green Giant and another person doesn't look like, I don't know, an Oompa Loompa. Um, so just keep them aligned. Maybe pay attention to chins. Sometimes when people go to get the picture taken, they lift their chin up a little bit. Not a flattering pose of anybody. Uh, so maybe ask them to bring their chin down a little bit. I promise you they won't put their chin down too far. Everybody in their heads, when they do this, thinks they've done this. <laughs> so it'll be fine. <laughs> General tips. Don't shoot up the nose. Kind of what we just talked about. But also, altars tend to be elevated. I'll show you a little sample video here that Father Greg and I used when we were demonstrating how not to shoot up a nose. But basically, when you're standing right up near to the altar, your camera has to do this to look up at the person. As you back up, you have to lower your camera in order to be in line with the person. Father Greg is up there. Father Greg is taller than me to begin with. Father Greg has just now added another two feet to his height. So instead of being a foot taller than me, he's now three feet taller than me. So if I stand here, and I zoom in, and I take a photo, I'm looking up under Father Greg's chin. So he looks like Tippy the turtle, because he's all neck. There are a couple fixes for that. I can get taller. I can get up on a ladder or a stool. I can ask Father Greg to get down on his knees. Or if you have a camera that will zoom in enough, you can back up and zoom in. The further away you are, the less exaggerated that angle will be. If I'm here, the camera is looking up at his chin. As I move back, the camera levels off. Avoid things growing out of people's heads. Candles, window frames, a crucifix. That would be not good. Um, sometimes you're in the moment and you're not noticing, but just in general, kind of keep an eye out for that. Make sure that there's nothing behind them sticking straight up because in a two-dimensional photo, it will look like it's growing out of the top of the person's head. A good rule of thumb is 45 or 90 degree. That rule basically means if you're getting a glare in someone's glasses from a light source, move 45 degrees off or just a little bit off, you'll probably eliminate that. If there's a bright light source behind someone and they're getting silhouetted, move 45 degrees off or 90 degrees off, you'll probably resolve that issue. Again, some examples of that. If I walk over here to about a 45 degree angle, so if you have to, certain situations you'll be at dead on, zero degrees. If you can get to 45 degrees, the exposure is much better because the camera isn't even thinking about that window. It's not even thinking about that light. I'm getting Father Greg and I'm getting the chair and I'm getting the banner. Another point is don't amputate limbs, particularly arms and hands. Try and keep arms and hands in a photo. Legs a lot of times go away. People are kind of used to that. Try and avoid chopping off arms, hands, fingers, that kind of thing. It, it, when people look at a photo, it makes their ring go little winkers and the photo feels a little off to them if you've chopped off limbs, particularly at joints. Although we say fill the frame, again, leave a little space for cropping a little bit at the top and as much on the left and right as you want. Um, but just making sure there's a little at the top, because if we have to crop a photo and straighten it in Photoshop, that is a cropping action. When we rotate it, there, you will lose a little bit at the top. Remember, you do have two zooms. You have the zoom in the camera, and you have your feet. Sometimes your feet are the best option for a slight change, rather than trying to get the camera to do that little tiny adjustment exactly the way that you want to. Some of your point-and-shoots will have a digital zoom. Please don't use that. All digital zoom is is using a scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom into a photo that's already been taken. That's exactly what your camera's doing. It's going to its optical maximums. It's then got that image, and it's just cropping out and cropping out and cropping out and cropping out and cropping out to get a digital zoom. Never works well. Lighting is another big thing that you'll run into. Dealing with backlights, we've talked about a little bit. If you're getting silhouettes, change your angle. Sometimes that will help move 45 degrees off, get that window a little bit off to the side. Filling the frame, making the subject more dominant in the frame, will trick your camera into adjusting the exposure, probably ending up in a better photo. 
avoid flash. Anytime that you can avoid flash. Um, that little teeny flash on your phone, that little teeny flash on your point and shoot, that little pop-up flash on top of your SRL, SLR, never going to be flattering for anybody. If you have a nicer flash on top of your SLR, if you don't have the option to move it off, which I'm guessing at this point you're not, um, angle it off to the side to a white wall and get that light to bounce. Try that out, see how it works. Or angle it up at the ceiling at an angle and have it bounce back down. Sometimes that will resolve your issue. Um, try it, but typically leave it off. Realistically, the best option for you is natural light, light coming in through windows. If, if the action is taken in front of a window, great. If you can spin a group who wants their photo taken around so that they're standing in front of a window and the light is behind you hitting them, great. It's not always going to happen. But if you can, take that route. All right, quick recap. Whatever camera you have is fine. Put it in auto mode, run with it until you get comfortable with the camera. Be the photo ninja. Dark colors, stay out of the front of the audience, be as silent and unobtrusive as you can. Fill the frame with your subject. This not only looks better, but it helps with lighting and compensation. Try not to amputate, but do leave a little bit of space for cropping. Always remember, your feet can zoom. Keep your group small or go big. Use the 45 and 90 degree rule to your advantage. And natural light is your friend. One final point. Remember, the most important thing is the event. For the person being celebrated, for the family and friends in the audience, and for you. All right. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing your photos. Happy shooting.